Hey, good evening everyone. It's Mary Fane Brandt with a LinkedIn Bakery serving up bite-sized tips so you don't get overwhelmed. Welcome to Bite Size Tips for Busy Entrepreneurs. You can find me here the first and third Wednesdays of the month at 7 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time with special guests from all different industries. Now, if you're watching the replay, if you could, please go ahead and type replay because I want to engage with you. We want to go back and answer your questions. And also, let me know what industry you're in and who would be a good connection for you? Because you know what? One of my God-given talents is being a connector. I actually won an award for that at Harahub last October. So I love connecting people with resources, products, and people. So tonight's guest, I'm super excited. I have Jen Herman from Jen's Trends. That's a little trendy name. Welcome, Jen, to the show. Um, Hello, everybody. <laughs> so um, Jen is a blogger, and Instagram is her jam. Now, I've got to be honest, I don't really know much about Instagram, so I'm super excited to have Jen with us. Um, Jen has her own business, Jen's Trends. She's a blogger, and here's a fun fact about her. She won the top 10 social media blog three years in a row, not one, three years. That's really impressive, Jen. That was 2014, 2015, and 2016. And it was. And they stopped doing it after 2017, so no one else gets to win it anymore. Sweet. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to tell our audience how we met because I think it's really important to um, share how I know my guest experts on the show. Um, so Jen's a speaker and she spoke at Social Media Marketing World and as you guys know, I love to volunteer and I've done Social Media Marketing World two years in a row and we met in passing there but we didn't really have the opportunity to sit down and talk until Kendra, our mutual friend, um, Kendra and I were going to get together for a LinkedIn profile writing night. We were going to revamp our LinkedIn profiles, four hours of drinking wine and writing and then Kendra wrote to me and said, hey, do you mind if I hijack our night for a happy hour? And I was like, no, that's fine. Cool. So we had a happy hour with all these savvy business women, most of them from social media marketing world. And it was at that happy hour that I got to sit right across from Jen and chat with her and find out exactly how cool she is and how knowledgeable she is on Instagram. So um, Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. I am so excited to be here. I love this. Like you said, it was so fun to sit down across from you and meet you like for real, not just <laughs> at the like in passing or, you know, the name recognition, but to literally sit down and, and we shared a few cocktails and stories. And oh, spe speaking of cocktails, wait, we said we'd have wine. Cheers to everyone who brought their wine to the show. Cheers. Sit back, relax and learn a lot about Instagram. So, oh, that is good wine. I'm, I'm drinking, um, Unruly. Oh. Mm hmm That's pretty good. So my friend Shelly's on. She said she's excited to learn more about Instagram. She has an online boutique, Babalu Boutique. So Jen, why don't you share a little bit, like how did you become this Instagram expert and blogger? So my story is kind of random. Um, it wasn't where I wanted to go. I didn't have a plan to be this person in this capacity. Um, I actually started my blog in January 2013, and it was just uh, social media in general. And it was very 101, introductory level, tutorial type stuff. And in the process, I was like, okay, I better figure out this whole Instagram thing because everyone was talking about it. And if I'm going to be good at doing social media marketing, I'd better figure out Instagram. And I wasn't on Instagram at the time. So I jumped on the oh. platform and I fell in love with it. I loved, I love photography anyway. So the photography side of it and sharing photos and doing the editing and the filters was really fun. But the engagement and the connections I was making with these people from around the world was fascinating to me. And it was something I hadn't done on any other platform to that level. So I was like, that's it. I'm in love with Instagram. This is my jam. We are doing this. Okay. okay. How do you go out and research and how do you use it as, you know, a marketing tool? And no one else was really talking about it. Everyone was very like superfluous type, like more people, follow more people, like more posts, you know, use more hashtags. I'm like, this is not marketing. This is just like stupid stuff. So if you, you can go back, all my original blog posts are back there. Like if you dig back five years, you'll find them all. But I literally started writing about Instagram from a learning perspective and just saying, hey, this is what I tried. This is what worked. This is what didn't work. And I've got a really good kind of business background, marketing background that if you give me a concept, 
I can kind of figure out how to translate that into marketing tactics. So I started offering up those tactics and suggestions. And after about six months, I really started to build this entire audience around Instagram. And my, uh, my blog had started to grow and build some traction anyways, but people started inviting me on their, there at the time it was hangout lives over on Google plus and having me come on as a guest talking about Instagram. And then I started getting podcast requests to go on podcasts and it just kind of evolved into being this Instagram expert. And it was all through trial and error. It was a hundred percent, like just all, really or, all organic, doing it. right? All exactly. organic. And it was, and through that, I've now made amazing connections because I've, I now I work with those third party apps. So I know what's going on in the background in the API. Oh. I work with people around the world to test things and experiment when new features roll out. If I don't have them and, I get all these people that are part of my network to help figure these things out and talk about things. And so now it's, yeah, now I'm the world's forefront blogger on Instagram marketing. I've probably wow. written more about Instagram than anybody else on the planet. Um, and, but I love it. I still love the platform for all the same reasons. And now I get to, you know, do these types of things and hang out with awesome people and, and talk about Aww. Instagram and how to use it for business. So I, I love it. I couldn't complain. No. And you <laughs> like all the changes that have happened. Like I know Instagram stories is a big thing. And everybody really likes that. Like, I'm not a big Instagram person, so this is going to be fascinating for me. And it was one of those, and to, to be completely honest, I still don't love Instagram stories okay. as a personal user. I love them for businesses, and I understand how they work and how they are incredibly powerful as a tool. I personally don't like that kind of short form, goofy content, very a la Snapchat style. Yeah. I just don't like it. And so I don't create that kind of content, but I will use stories to promote things and share behind the scene things. If I'm at events and conferences, I, my stories blow up with a ton of content because it's great. Here's what I'm doing for the next 24 hours and then it disappears and it doesn't, you know, infiltrate anybody's feed or those sorts of things. Uh, okay. So I do love stories. I just don't love them personally. And I don't watch a lot of stories. Like I rarely watch people's stories unless I know like my friend, Mike Alton is over in Paris <gasps> right now because he works for Agora Pulse and they're out there. I the love him. Right? Guess what? Yeah, he's, Guess he's what? Like, he's going to be on my show. Yeah. yeah. He is awesome. So can I interject real quick? So this is one of those things that I love about social media marketing world. It's not just about the speakers and the content, which is fabulous. But I have to say, I have met people two years ago that we are now fast, hard colleagues and friends. We support each other. And Mike was on Stephanie Liu's show and we connected on LinkedIn and we had some in-mail on LinkedIn and we set up a phone call. So people, that's how you do it. You connect online, but take that offline. Get a phone call, get a coffee date. But Mike is amazing. He is probably one of the, <gasps> if not the most generous kind yeah. supportive like people not even like male people like just people in general people. like he is so amazing and he's been a dear friend of mine for <gasps> going on you know over five years he was one of the first people that had me on his google hangout Aww. shows back in the day i've known him forever and same thing through social media marketing world we finally <laughs> met in person and, and you know really forged those bonds even more but yeah he is and he's incredibly smart you guys he can literally like He'll write a 3,000 word blog post in the half hour it takes right? to do this show. It's, he's crazy. And he's on that GDPR thing like that. And he's featured in uh, an article and I think he's teaming up with some company on the GDPR thing. And I was like, wow. He's crazy smart. He's super, like he's got the techie side, but he's got like a practical application side. Like he's, I love him in so many ways. And uh, but yeah, so he, but he's in France right now because he's over there for their Agora Pulse retreat. So right. Some amazing story. But I think he's coming to San Diego this summer. He'll be here for Social Media Day at the end of the month. Yeah. So we're supposed to like meet up for coffee because I want to meet him in person. You know, it's I know, online. I'm, here. Oh. I'm so bummed. He's coming out to San Diego and I'm going to be in Florida. <laughs> I'm like, no. Are you speaking in Florida? Yeah, I'm speaking at Social Media Day Jacksonville. <gasps> There's a Social Media Day everywhere. That's fabulous. Okay. Well, sorry about that sidetrack, guys, but Mike Alton is pretty awesome, and I'm super excited that he said yes to being on my show, and, you know, blogging for speakers and small businesses is going to be his um, topic. So, Jen, back to Instagram and how you organically started learning, you built your followers, which I always think is the best way to do it. I feel the real experts in social media are the ones that got in and just figured it out and kept studying and learning from the other experts and from trial and error what worked for them and what didn't work for them because then you're speaking from experience and heart. 
Absolutely. A hundred percent. And that's the thing. Like, you know, it is one of those things where anyone can stand up there and say, here's what works. But <laughs> when you're working with clients and you're actually seeing what works and when you're testing things and when you have people that are, you know, actually trying out new features before they come out so you can actually think tactically about how to use them, not just be like, oh, here's a fun new thing, but actually right. think tactically. That's where the real success and results come from. I love it. I love it. I, I totally agree with that. Very, very impressive. Um, so fast forward. So you started all this organically. You grew your growers and you dug in and learned Instagram. What attracted you to Instagram? There's a lot of different platforms out there. So I, I, you know, why, you know, I focus on LinkedIn and I know my reasons and some <laughs> Stephanie Lou, I know my reasons. Stephanie Lou focuses on Facebook and she's awesome at Facebook live. Thank you, Stephanie. High five. Cause if it weren't for you girl, I would not be doing this Facebook live <laughs> show. Um, so what, what drew you to the platform of Instagram? So it was definitely the photography aspect. I okay. love photography. I really do love the, the, the ability to share something visually. And I've like, if you have anyone's ever seen like me around my daughter, like her life is a photo shoot. I take uh. like a hundred thousand photos of every single thing she does. And then I go through and I select photos and I create photo albums and all these things. Like I just, I, my, my parents grew up taking photos of everything. So to uh. me, the photography aspect is very, it's very natural. It's very comforting for me. Um, but beyond that, in terms of Instagram, like I have people that I met on Instagram five years ago that are now my besties. Aww. That are now the people that I go and stay with when I travel or that we refer, you know, business, you know, referrals to each other. And it's all because you like the person's post and you're in the same industry or, you know, I've got, I've got dear friends of mine who started off as just total fans. Like they just happened to follow me and found me and now we're besties. And it's like, yay! I never would have met these people in any other capacity right. aside from the fact that we connected through Instagram and it's such an engaged platform where on Facebook, people tend to do the, like, the stalking, like, kind of lurking in the background where they look at things, but they don't engage. Because then, you know, when you like something on Facebook, all your friends see that you liked it, and you not, don't necessarily want them to see that you like certain things or whatever. Right, you kind of hide. Right, whereas on Instagram, it's much more open. People just, like, get out there, and they, they start liking things, and people are commenting, and it's very, you know, mutually responsive in that way in terms of being able to build that relationship through genuine engagement. And that's why I'm a huge believer in Instagram is building a, a community around your brand. It's not just to, you know, share photos, but to really build that community. Um, and that's, that's probably the single best reason why I love it. The, the business reason that I love it is because the traffic from Instagram has a zero bounce rate. It's people don't understand how I'm like, hmm? I know. I'm like, <laughs> so, cause you only have one link on Instagram. So the only place you can put a link is in the bio. So if you do a really good post with a good call to action, you say, go click on the link in my bio. They like, literally have read your post. They go click on your bio. Then they click on the link and they get to your website. They've already done. What? The they don't leave. They, they've what? already done the work and they want to be there. How come I didn't know about this? Oh, your buddy Brian says hi. Brian yeah. Robinson. Yeah, he's all. We've got about 16 people watching so far. So yeah. yay. Yeah. Wow. So you're only allowed one link on Instagram and you put that in your bio and then in your post, you're like, Hey, if you like this, go right. over. Like, so I'll announce a new blog post and I'll say new blog post is live. I'm talking about this. Da, 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 da. Here's some key takeaways. Click on the link in my bio to read the whole blog post. Or you could be like, Hey, new product just came out. We have all these different colors available. Click on the link in our bio to see everything oh, available. Thought. So I could do like new online course coming out. Yes, exactly. You can send them to your opt-in to get in advance. Ah. You can get them to download your video series or whatever you want. So you send them to that link, but by the time they've done that, they've already done, like I said, three or four clicks. So it's not junk traffic. Like they're scrolling and like they, you know, thumb stopped on something by accident or they're, you know, the thing froze and they clicked by accident or they meant to click something else or they're like, oh, that wasn't what I wanted. Like they legitimately want to be there. So you basically have a zero bounce rate. So you don't get hmm. as much traffic from Instagram as other platforms, but it's the best kind okay. of traffic you can get, which is why from a business perspective, if you use it well and strategically, it's super high performing. I'm going to have to rethink why I'm not on Instagram. <laughs> so um, Shelly Mitch, uh, she said that it works great for her business. She had the online boutique. 
Um, Valerie joined us. Vanessa joined us. We have a bunch of people saying hi. So you guys, I just want to let you know. <laughs> oh, Flossie's here. Hey, girl. My girl Flossie, healthy mama. Um, if you have any questions, this is a great time to go ahead and post them. We're going to go through a couple strategies and things that uh, Jen wants to share with us. And then, you know what, we will go on after the show as well to answer any questions we don't get to. So I have a real general, I think it's a real general question. Melody's here. Oh, shoot. It just, um, hold on. So, and you might be answering this and you can tell me to wait. But Laura says, how do you make a link on Instagram? How do you add the link? So you're saying that you only are allowed one link. And do you change that all the time then in your bio? Every time you have something new, you just... You can. So you can change it as many times as you want. So you get the one link. So you want to go into your edit profile. When you go to your, your profile, there's an edit profile button. And in there, you can put whatever website link you want. Got it. So mine defaults to my blog page because I usually promote my blog post. So I always say click on the link in my bio. But I could change it. If I had an opt-in, if I was running a campaign for a week, I could change that link to that okay. campaign link. Um, that sort of thing. If you, you know, want to change it, if you have different sales products or things like that that you're pushing, you could change that out, you know, whether it's daily, weekly, whatever, to align with whatever you have going on. Um, but yes, yeah, so you just want to go in, edit that, put whatever link you want in there. Like I said, you can change it as many times as you want and whatever you want to direct people to, that's where you send them. It's super. So easy. like my landing page for my online course. Hmm. Exactly. Huh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess Instagram is going to be added to the game just because I like what you said that, um, you can have that one link. They've already been following you. You direct them to that and it's instantly, like you said on Facebook, I feel like you get lost on Facebook these days oh, yeah. because there's so much, like, I, I don't care how many times a day you're on Facebook. Like you just get lost in the sea of traffic. So you really have to build up. Yeah, your followers. So we have a bunch of questions here. So um, Brian says, just got Jen's Instagram book in the mail. What? Yay. Oh, my gosh. I love it because it's for dummies. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram for business for dummies. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, any major retailers. I love it. So, so at the end of this, Jen will go back in and you'll go into the event and put your link in so people can buy your book if they want it. But, um, yeah, so, uh, what do we have? Uh, you can also use Linktree to include a couple link. Do you ever use Linktree? So I don't personally use Linktree because I don't have the need for it. But yes, Linktree is an alternative that you can use. And there's other ones that are similar. Linktree is kind of the most popular one that gives you one link. But basically what happens is when you click on that link, it takes you to a web page, essentially, that you can turn around and say, okay, now on this page, here's the link to this recent blog post, here's a link to the okay. landing page, here's a link to the contest I ran. So you can have multiple links. So if you're telling people to go click on the link in your bio, you can actually have it go to more than one place Got it. by using Linktree, which then goes to the each individual URL. I kind of think I want, like, I just want to lead them to either my landing page uh, for my course or if I'm selling my PDFs or something like that. Yeah. But that makes sense having Linktree. And so, it really depends like on your business, right? So if you have products or something you have a lot of and you want to send people to all the different pages, uh -huh. then it makes sense to do something like Linktree because okay. you have lots of links. In your situation where it's more service-based and yeah, you just, it's either going to be like your landing page or maybe one other thing, then you don't really need it because you're going to be sending people to a specific yeah. page for a specific period of time. Um, I always use the example of E! News, which is just the letter E! News on Instagram, which is the entertainment channel that right. I, to I totally obsessed with. But um, <laughs> it's on top of all the, you know, the big news that matters in the world. Right? But they use, it's not Linktree, but they use something similar. And when, so same thing, because they have breaking news and news updates uh, okay. in the industry throughout the day, they're posting, you know, seven, eight times a day. They can't change the link every time. So they okay. use something like the link tree where when you go to that link, you see all the photos related to what they just saw on Instagram. And then when you tap on that photo, it takes you to that individual post on their website. Okay. So situations like that, it makes perfect sense. Depending on your business, you decide whether or not you really need the link tree feasibility. Okay, so we have a, a couple more questions here. Flossie Hall is asking, is the swipe left for the link only for large accounts? One of my athletes posted for us and 
try and it tried to swipe left with a link. I can't do that with our business account. I don't really understand the question. So on Instagram <laughs> stories, um, you have the option. It's a swipe up actually. Swipe um, up. Okay. You kind of swipe any direction, but it's really a swipe up. But there's on Instagram stories, if you are a business profile and you have over 10,000 followers, oh, or if you're a verified account, those are the two criteria. So if you're verified, you get the swipe up links. If you're not verified, like I'm not verified, but I'm a business profile with over 10,000 followers, I get the link aspect. So in your stories, which is a great tool to use, you can put any link on any story. So I could do a promo to the blog post and then have the link to swipe up. Like, for example, I promoted this webinar or this kind of podcast with you. And I said, hey, going live with Mary tonight. And I tagged you. And then I said, swipe up to get to her Facebook page to watch the live video. Oh. So when they swipe up, they're going right to your Facebook page. Darn, so, I should have been on Instagram for that. Hmm. I'm going to have to go check out your Instagram page now. <laughs> it's still there. It's still, it's still hanging out for a few more hours. Um, but, yeah, so there's different ways that you can use that when it comes to Instagram stories. But you do have to have the business profile with 10,000 followers or be a verified page. Yeah, Flossie says that makes sense. She has 36,000. Perfect, yeah. Yeah. So we have a couple other questions. Sherry saying, looking for strategy to engage sign up and increase viewers. So that's probably a pretty general question here. People are probably going to ask like how to increase viewers. So in terms of growing followers, there's a lots of different tactics that you can do. Um, first and foremost, I always recommend a good hashtag strategy for way more detail. Go to jenstrends.com and then just search for Instagram hashtags. And I have all like, I have multiple posts talking specifically about my okay. hashtag recipe that is super detailed on exactly what I love it you said recipe <laughs> I did it is a recipe it's literally the secret sauce that I tell everybody ah, um, I love it <laughs> so definitely want to go check that out but you definitely want a good hashtag strategy I also recommend following hashtags meaning find oh. the hashtags where your audience hangs out so for example for me my target audience are people who need social media strategy support so they're usually going to social media conferences ah. which means I will follow hashtags for like social media marketing world or inbound or social media camp or social media ah. days. And when I go through, I like all of the content that comes up on that hashtag. So what happens is now I show up in their notifications from these conferences. And even if I'm not at the conference, I show up in their notifications. They're like, who's this Jen's trends that just liked all my photos. They come over, they see my bio, they go, Hey, this girl might be somebody worth following. And I get dozens uh, up to, you know, close to 100 followers from every social media conference that I follow. That's I strategy. Do. That is yeah. a good strategy. It's I like that. Because you do have to go through and physically, you know, look and like. But you're not harassing them. You're not asking for a, a follow. You're not showing up in their comments and right. being like, hey, I do this social media stuff and you need to follow me. Instead, you're just liking their posts. But you know they're your target audience because they're at the event that's, where they're learning about the things you do. That's what I like about it because it's very strategic. I, I can see a yeah. lot of value in that. And so let's say, for example, like if you were, you know, if you're a florist, then you're going to look for things where people are hanging wedding. out that are potentially your target audience. So, yeah, things like wedding hats. But not just wedding. You want, like in our case, San Diego weddings. Or right. You okay. Weddings. Like you want to get niche specific. Okay. Um, you want to think about what your audience is doing. Even if you're a florist, think about things like graduation. You know, who are people yeah. in high school? Who are people that are graduating college? Things that they're doing and what hashtags are they using where you can kind of hang out and like their content to get in their mindset before they need to actually get those, those flowers. I love strategy. So it's really, again, it's very strategic. It, like I said, it's not going to net you thousands of followers, but it's going to get you high quality followers. And I'd rather have a dozen new high quality followers than a thousand irrelevant followers. Amen, sisters. So we've got some comments. Vanessa says that's such a good tip. Amanda Barr says Jen's hashtag strategy oh, is great. I've noticed a difference in my engagement when I implemented it. Um, and then Francesca Vitali said, how do you get verified? You don't. <laughs> oh. I'm still waiting. If you cannot get verified on Instagram. They choose who to verify. There is no option to ask really? for it. There is no form to fill out. They randomly choose, or not randomly, they strategically, I guess, choose. They decide who gets verified, and you cannot request it. You can't figure out some okay. you know, backdoor way into it. It's just not going to happen. Got it. Well, thank you for clearing that up. And then... <laughs> 
Laura said she noticed I, uh, I noticed I increased 40 plus followers by sharing oops I went over here twice a day regular post now do I have to follow them too if they follow me no oh my god no. okay I hate the follow for follow let's just get that out of the air right away like, <laughs> I so don't do follow for follow because here's the thing your Instagram is your Instagram it has to be the people that you want to follow that you right. actually want to log into Instagram and see the content if you start following all the people who follow you, can you imagine the insane crap? That's a hot mess. Life, right? Total hot mess. Nobody wants that in their life. Like, we don't need that. So no. there's no need to follow for follow. If you if you want to, jump over to their account and go and like a couple of their photos, kind of in reciprocity as a thank you for them okay. following you. But there is absolutely no need to do follow for follow. Thank you for clearing that up. Oh, I want to say hi to my sister Jenny and my sister Sammy and probably my dad and my stepmom <laughs> Shelly. They just said, hey, we're all here watching. And maybe my niece Charlie. I don't know. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, and I know my sister. So my sister's on Instagram all the time. And now she has a business that she's um, nurturing and growing. So I know that this will be helpful to her on the hashtag strategy and just how to grow your 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 followers and engagement is engagement just as important on Instagram as it is on other platforms unfortunately it's probably more important and I hate that oh. um, but on Instagram with an influencer platform people really do look at those vanity metrics and it's super annoying but they do they want to see those like counts they want to see those comments they, they oh. will look and see like oh this post didn't get very many likes like they're very okay. judgmental in general <laughs> So I, I feel like it's Beverly Hills-ish. It totally is. It really, it's really Hollywood. Bad, like the cool kids. Like it really is. But as a business, I don't want you to stress about that. Because again, okay. I would rather have 50 likes and 10 new leads than 5,000 likes and no leads. Agreed. So Quality versus not, quantity. Exactly, it, it's really not really how much engagement you get. It's what kind of engagement you're getting. Just because you get a lot of likes doesn't mean getting conversions. And if you're saying that's click true. on the link in my bio and you're getting 30 clicks to your website, which results in 20 opt-ins to your offer. That's great. That's a win. In my book. That's 20 opt-ins you would not have got otherwise. So I'm not going to worry that you've got 20% less likes on that post if you've got a bunch of potential leads and, and clients and that sort of thing. So it's easy to fall into the vanity metric on Instagram because it's so popular in terms of recognition but I don't like businesses to focus on. Okay, that. so we so folks, we don't want to we don't want to put too much attention on all the like aspect because it is super easy to when I was first starting, I was all on my Facebook. I was like, "Oh my gosh, I need more likes. I need more this. I need more likes. I need more followers." But I really, you know, and I still don't have tons in my opinion, but it's all organic and the people that are there are engaging and they're my tribe, they're my community. So Build your tribe and community organically. Never pay for it, right, Jen? Yes, 100%. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> Don't pay for followers and likes. <laughs> you see those ads all the time, and it's it's crazy because I've actually had colleagues say, well, you know, have you done that? I've thought about doing it. I'm like, no. I, why do I want to add 5,000, 10,000 people just, just to have nothing. that do nothing but probably clog up my whatever platform you're on. Well, and, that, and that's the worst thing is it actually reduces your engagement, right? Because if you get 100 likes on a photo and you have 1,000 followers, that's 10% engagement. If you get ah. 100 likes but you have 5,000 followers, you just dropped your engagement to 20 or to 2% from 10%. Like, it's it, when that's what people look at, right? They're only looking at your engagement, your likes and comments to your total follower count. So just because you have 10,000 followers doesn't mean – you're getting engagement and it looks inflated and it looks horrible when you have an engagement ratio. So do not buy the followers. Don't okay. even worry about it. And even if they come back and say, Oh, well they're going to like your post and it's going to be this. I don't care. 200 likes is irrelevant if you're not getting right. any business out of it. Yeah. They do that a lot in some Facebook groups. Hey, drop your link here and I'll like it. And I'm always like, well, can't you just like it? Cause you like me and you've looked at my exactly. page. <laughs> exactly. It's good to know. I'm kind of on the right way. So we've got a bunch of questions and comments coming in. So I know you have some more topics, but I just, uh, Mary Rose says, hello. Uh, do you Hi. know? Yeah. Mary Rose follows you. She's, um, she's in my LinkedIn, uh, group. She follows you consistently. Francis, hey, Francesca, I'm sorry. Francesca said, okay. Since I never managed to be live for Jen's Live on Wednesdays, I have a thousand questions, not a hundred. She has a thousand questions for you. Can she explain the different parameters for the Instagram stats for stories versus posts? Does that make sense? Uh, I think so. So 
Instagram stories and Instagram posts are completely different. Okay. So there are right now you have about 800 million monthly active users on Instagram. About 300 million people are using stories actively. So there's, it's not quite half, but a lot of people are using the stories in terms of the statistics and the differences. They are two completely separate platforms. What people are doing on your Instagram okay. stories has no impact on your Instagram posts and vice versa. So if okay. someone likes all of your stories, that doesn't mean anything in terms of how your content will rank in the regular feed and vice versa. Okay. If, if people are liking your stories and they're engaging there, engage with them there. Keep creating the stories. Keep creating the content for them to engage with. Uh, if they're engaging with your regular content, then be there and engage there. In terms of like general statistics, in terms of performance, it really, I can't give you anything specific because it's going to depend on your audience. And like for me, I do stories, but I don't do them very often. And I don't get a ton of engagement because my audience doesn't know to interact with me there. But when I do an Instagram post, I get much more engagement because that's where people know to find me and know to look for my content. So okay. it, you can't say one is better than the other or one's better performing. It really comes down to you testing it and giving it time. You can't just be like, oh, I posted for a week and this didn't work. Like right. <laughs> I, I went live on Instagram for like four months before I finally had a regular audience. And it's been uh, like over a year and I still struggle sometimes to have people show uh, up live. Like, I get that. It takes time. It takes time, folks. Even for this Facebook Live, like I haven't been doing this a year yet, and I'm it's it's finally coming together, right? Yeah. By having these expert guests and stuff on. But it it took the first three months were rough. Everyone's I'm like Mary. Live and have <laughs> zero people watching, and I have sixteen thousand followers. Wow. At the time I think I probably had like I don't know maybe over ten thousand, but. It was like literally no one would show up live. And then like one person would show up and then someone would leave and then another person would show up. And it right. was like, now I have a regular viewership of about, you know, anywhere from 12 to 20 people live at any one time, usually about a hundred throughout the entire hour show. But then I get like 200 views on a replay. Right. So again, it's just, it's maybe not the best time. It's, you know, right. you know it happens. Here's my thought on timing. So before I was going to launch the show, I was like, oh, do I do Tuesdays at lunch? Tuesdays like at 12 o'clock lunchtime? Do I do this? I literally sat on my show for a month because I couldn't figure out what time. And then I'm not even kidding. Like I talked to everyone. What time should I do my show? 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, Saturdays? Because there is no perfect time, folks. Yeah. We're all working. We have family. We have kids. We're all time working. Films. Different time zones. So just friggin' do it and they can watch the replay. Exactly. And that's why I always say, I'm like, I, the people who show up live get to be actively participating. Right? Exactly. They can ask the questions and do this kind of thing. So there's an incentive. But if they can't make it, they watch the replay. They can leave comments after the fact. We come back and we answer and we participate that way. But yeah, like, it doesn't matter what time you go, you're gonna miss people. It's yeah. just, ne there's never the perfect time. Yeah. So I'm just reading all the comments. Everyone's like, you're consistent with your broadcast. So it's working. That's what Melody is telling me. Um, uh, yeah. Melody's also say, do the live show at a time you can commit to. That yeah. is good because I couldn't commit to 12 o'clock on Tuesdays. And so the seven o'clock, every other, you know, the first and third Wednesdays of the month, that was like, okay, I can do that. It, you know, it's a lot of work. People don't understand what goes into doing any kind of live show, but um, Cause we were talking about that, you know, before we went live and that's the thing, like I do mine Wednesday, every other Wednesday at four 30 on, and it's like, that's what works for me. I get home from work. I have a half hour to decompress, get everything set up, get text, you know, confirmed, go live. And four 30 is seven 30 Eastern. So right. it's like, it's not necessarily ideal because people are either doing dinner, putting the kids to bed East coast, you know, then you got people in Europe and it's like the middle yeah. of the night. So it's not convenient for them, but I'm like, Hey, this is what works for me where I can show up. Right. Without so this is when I'm here. And then they can watch the replay because I have a global community. I have people in England and, and like South yeah. America and stuff. But and they're like, oh, that, you know, even the East Coast are like, well, we'll be in bed by then. Um, and I'm like, that's cool. Hey, watch the replay and let me know. And if you've got any questions, type those questions in and we'll go back and answer them. So we have Pam from Pamela's Flora Fantasia watching. Um Oh, she said, Jen, uh, thanks for the florist info. So we have a florist watching. So that was spot on. Great example to pull out. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, we've got a lot of engagement. So so we talked about um, we should use a hashtag strategy. So you went over that. Um, we should not compare Instagram stories with your Instagram. And, again, you guys, I'm not an Instagram person. So if I say the wrong terminology, <laughs> 
don't hold it against me. But I know there's Instagram stories which disappear in 24 hours. It's like Snapchat, right? Yeah, it's very a Snapchat. And once again, I don't understand like why you post something for 24 hours. It's in my mind. The fun stuff. It's one, and it was really hard for me to adapt to this. But it is one of those things where like that's where I show things I do with my daughter on the weekend. Or if, like I said, when I go to a conference, I just like blow up my stories with everything from the conference because I'm like, it's okay, it's going to disappear in 24 hours. And it's it's much more exclusive content. So I'll be like, hey, every Tuesday I do Tuesday oh. shoes day. So I show the shoes I'm wearing that Tuesday because, of course, I'm known for my shoes. And so I have all these like spontaneous things and I have some regular recurring things. But it's stuff that it's like, it's not polished. It's much more raw. Okay. It's very unfiltered. And then you're like, hey, it's gone. And it's like, okay. but I usually do it like, hey, by the way, I'm doing this show. Make sure you show up. Or, hey, breaking news. Make sure you go check out my regular Instagram post for the updates. So I do like oh. cross-promotion type stuff. Um, it really, again, it depends on your audience. And there's certain things that I don't mind showing, you know, because I know I'm like, hey, it's going to disappear in 24 hours. Like, that's okay. Right. But huh. it's something that I want to live on permanently on my Instagram because I'm like, well, that random photo of my daughter at the park isn't brand related, but right. it's brand related enough that people care what I'm doing and want to see my daughter and what I do in my personal life, but I don't want it to live on for the next, you know, however many years on Instagram. So there's, you have to find the weird, awkward balance that works okay. for you and your I'll keep thinking about that. Um, that makes sense what you were saying, like how to use that. So thank you for clearing that up for this, this gal right here who's not really on Instagram much. Um, my sister says, is there an age demographic for Insta versus Facebook? Dun, 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 dun. So, and here's where I always love this question. This so, is good. Wait, this is going to require wine. <laughs> this is, um, so Instagram obviously favors the 18 to 35 it is definitely more of a millennial and Gen Z type audience. That being said, there are more people in the 35 and older demographics on Instagram than there are on Twitter. So there are plenty of people over the age of 35 that are using Instagram. In general, Instagram skews younger, Facebook skews more like the 35 and over range. So technically, if you really want to look at the demographics, 35 is kind of the differentiating mark where over 35 is Facebook, under 35 is Instagram. That being said, there are 800 million, close to 900 million monthly active users on Instagram. So even if your audience is 65-year-old men, they're still on Instagram. You may not have a bazillion of them. But you have a, enough of them that you can still have an audience. And it's really important that you know who that audience is and you continue to create content for that audience. Speak to them in a way that they can relate to and they will find you. You will build your tribe. Even if you only have 500 or 1,000 followers, if they are your genuine tribe that, you know, really care about what you're offering, they will be there and they will be actively engaged. Good point. Um, and it's important to know where your audience, what platform they're living on. Like, I, I don't think my audience is on Instagram, but I might have to have a conversation with you one-on-one, -on -one, Jen, and we might have to talk about maybe maybe my newer audience is on Instagram. Maybe my next audience is on Instagram. You've got me actually thinking about it, so that you're doing a good job. <laughs> my target audience is, like, the average person that reads my blog is a 45-year-old female. That's kind of my, the person I'm talking to is a 45-year-old right. female. But on Instagram, that's not necessarily the demographic. I do skew younger on Instagram, but that doesn't mean I talk to a different person. I'm still talking to that woman right. across the table from me when I'm writing a blog post or when I'm crafting content. And if the 22-year-old or the 28-year-old or the 34-year-old or the 65-year-old <laughs> finds me on Instagram, so be it. I'm being me, I'm being authentic, right. and I'm talking to that same context that they all relate to. So it, it doesn't mean that they're not there, but yeah, you, there are people, and I always say, I literally say this every time, anybody can use Instagram, not everybody should. And if your audience isn't there, then right. it's not worth it. But if they're there, you can absolutely use it in any business capacity. So I'm just going to ask a question because we were talking about this before we came on. You know, I don't use Instagram for my business. I have an Instagram account. Once in a while, I'm posting something. It's usually personal stuff. How do you determine if your audience is on Instagram. Like how would I, I'm going to put myself out there as a service provider, a LinkedIn strategist for entrepreneurs. How do I know if my audience is on LinkedIn or how does anybody know? Is there a way to find out? Well, first of all, you got to get out there and try it because <laughs> you can ask people and that's the easiest questions to ask, you know, go out on your LinkedIn network and say, Hey, are you guys using Instagram? Would that's you good. want LinkedIn tips over on Instagram? If they say yes, 
there's your answer. Okay. But beyond that, you have to try it. And it's, again, it comes back to what we were kind of talking about, you know, doing the lives and doing the stories. You, you have to give it time. So if you jump on Instagram, create a strategy, really know what you're trying to get. You can't just go out there and be like, I'm going to post this stuff. Like, do you want people to know you for your business, for your individual personal brand? Do you want yeah. them to know you for, you know, your course that you're offering? Why do you want them to find okay. you? You create the content, you create the hashtag strategy, and you see what happens. And if after six months you're like, hey, I'm just really not getting the traction, then maybe it's just not for you. But if after six months you're like, oh, my God, I've got, you know, a thousand followers. I'm getting great engagement. I'm getting opt-ins. Great. Do more. Okay. Because <laughs> it's, it's working. So you, the best thing to do is first ask if you feel like there's the opportunity, you really have to dive in and test it and you have to commit to it because like any social media, you get what you put in. If you say, Hey, I'm on Instagram, right. but you post once a month and you don't show up regularly and you don't engage and you're not creating value content, then you're not on Instagram. So, so I always say that on LinkedIn, my question, my question always when I'm doing a talks like is, I start with, are you on LinkedIn or are you active on LinkedIn? Right. There's a big difference because everyone's like, yeah, I've got a profile. I'm like, great. You have a profile. When was the last time you updated it? Right. So same last thing. For a job eight years ago. Right. <laughs> so we have a couple more questions. Let's see. Laura said, what's your signature hashtag when you enjoy or follow? So I think that's a three-part question. Like, do you have a signature hashtag? I'm assuming Jen's Trends. I use hashtags Jen's Trends and hashtag Learn from Jen. So those are my two. So whenever I do conferences or blog posts or educational content, I always include the hashtag learn from Jen. It was one of my early followers coined the hashtag and I'm like, I'm totally using this. So that's one of my branded hashtags. And then obviously the hashtag Jen's trends, your branded hashtag should be, you should have one to three for your brand. Okay. One should be your business name. Okay. One should be kind of what you're known for. So in your case, okay. Mary, it would be something related to LinkedIn. Yeah. I wouldn't use hashtag LinkedIn expert because that's kind of Vivica's, you know. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> but if you did something with a LinkedIn type that you could tie to, that would be another great branded hashtag for you that A, you're using, B, your followers are using if they're creating content, if they're taking your course, if they're reading something that you wrote, if they see you at an event, a conference, they're going to use those branded hashtags and create that content okay. for you around your brand. Okay. Sweet. Uh, we got some more. My sister said, I feel like it's a brand new customer college student that, what is this? <laughs> I'm not sure what my sister's trying to say. Wait, I feel like it's a brand new col customer college student that just graduated, sees you on Insta, uses you, loves you, refers friends. Do it. Mar oh, she, that's a personal message to me. Like, do it. Okay. Oh. So, Cam, uh, so, do it. so do it. So, Melody um, posted the Facebook Live in our marketing success team. And Cam is on here. He's saying Instagram is a necessary tool for reaching the college age demographic in his business. He has, I think this is Cam who has Cam Cakes in Arizona, cupcakes. Um, yes, Tucson is a university town. I increased my following by using Instagram. So now that someone mentioned the word college, because I'm submitting my course to a college and I want to design more courses for college, I just realized I had my aha moment right here on live that I need to be on Instagram. Crap. Yes, I agree 100%. <laughs> I totally agree. And that's the thing. Ah! That's the demographic, right? That 18 yeah. to 35. Those are those kids that are in college, graduating college, the first time career people. Right. And when you're talking about doing a LinkedIn course, yep. that is your target audience. These are the people who are either in college looking for a job, yeah. they just graduated, they're in their first job and they're like, I can't wait to get out of this crappy job, right. I need a real job. And they're looking for LinkedIn training. They're looking for, you know, wow. how do they actually maximize their opportunities as a job seeker or an entrepreneur or those sorts of things. Right. And that's how you're going to reach them is through Instagram because yes, they may be on LinkedIn, but if they need yeah, LinkedIn yeah. training, they don't know how to use LinkedIn well, right. but they're on Instagram. And that's where you want to come in organically. You want to come in in a way that meets them where they are. They're on Instagram. They're using it. They're connecting with friends, families, and brands. Wow. So you have to find a way into their world through Instagram that opens up the doors that says, oh my gosh, this woman's going to teach me how to use LinkedIn to get a job that I really want. That's going to actually yeah. maybe start paying off some student loans. What do I need to do to get this information? I just had like, I'm serious. Like I just had the aha moment. Thank you, Cam, for posting that because seeing the word college and Cam just put, they go to Instagram before Facebook. 
And I've always, you know, I relate to that 45, 50 year old woman for the career transitions and stuff, but there's such a need for these young, younger, you know, um, uh, younger Can students. I just say on that note, 100%, all of these college kids, all of these people that are in that millennial generation, and I'm, I'm technically the cusp of the millennial, I'm kind of like the Gen Y, Gen X kind of cusp, but the, the younger millennial side, they, they understand social media like nobody's business because they grew up with it but they don't understand branding and marketing. Mm. They don't understand business. They don't understand resumes and job searching right. in that capacity. They understand how to create memes and how to create boomerangs and how to create right. fun little anecdotes and all these crazy concepts on, on whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is, but to use it tactically, they have very little concept. So that's where you get to come in and say, okay, Here's how you're going to use LinkedIn effectively right. to actually use it to your advantage. And let's face it, most of them have a LinkedIn profile because somebody in college told them to set it up, but right. they've never done anything. Oh, my God, and they're so awful. Every time I see someone in a cap and gown, I just want to say, you're saying I have no experience, right? They have their, like, grad. Like, I just yes. graduated. I'm like, that picture just screams, hey, I just graduated. Oh I have God, no experience. Yes. And like their headline, like, uh, you, their headlines and their photos drive me wild. And you have six seconds to capture someone's attention. So, um, so my next course is all wrapped around, uh, students, obviously, cause it's, uh, it's for college, but Cam said, you're welcome. Like, high five, Cam. <laughs> like, it, I think it was just this conversation with all of you guys that I realized, like, oh, I guess I need to learn a new platform. Oh, man. <laughs> Like, oh man, oh, man. Me too. <laughs> no, but I'm great. I'm glad though. But like I said, I'm like, I, I bring people on because I know my audience wants to learn this stuff, but I'm always fascinated. And I'm like, hey, I, I'm not on Instagram, I don't think I need to be, and, and I'm gonna learn something. And guess what? I learned I need to be. Um, so we've got a lot of engagement, a lot of questions here. We're gonna be wrapping up, folks. Um, Jen, what, what was the last, is there one more thing that you want to share with our audience before we wrap up tonight? So two things I want to point out. One is you definitely want to do business profiles. We did talk about that. You yes. You get the swipe up link and that sort of thing. There is no negative impact on the algorithm by being a business profile. We all, we're all paranoid because Facebook business page reach and all that right. kind of stuff. Eh. That is not <laughs> the same thing on Instagram. So there's no negative impact. You definitely want to be a business profile. You get analytics you get details, you get call to action buttons, you get so much more functionality when you upgrade to a business profile. So please, please, please. Does that cost us money? No. It costs you nothing. You just have to have a Facebook page. You just have to connect already have to that. your Facebook page. As long as you have a Facebook page, you can upgrade, no cost, nothing. There's no, like literally there's no downside. So that's step number one for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do that first. Okay. Um, and then the second thing I wanted to just make sure we tie out tonight is when it comes to content strategies, I really want you guys to think about quality content. I literally have a post on Instagram in a month. I think it's literally been a month since I posted something on Instagram because I haven't had anything of value to share. And I live on Instagram. Instagram is my life. And I've literally not posted in that like three to four weeks. And it's because if I don't have something quality to share, I don't share it. You need a strategy. You need to know why you're posting to Instagram and every single post needs to augment that end result. If you're looking to get leads, if you're looking to build your audience, if you're looking to get sales, whatever that end goal is, if that piece of content is not in some way indirectly or directly impacting that goal, you don't post it. Okay. The way the algorithm works, the way the sorted content works, you only want to put out the best content that your audience A wants and B, need and C, will engage with. If they're okay. not going to engage with it, they're not going to see it in their feeds, which means you're going to be buried and they're never going to see your content again. So it has to be quality content. Really think about that strategy. Have good photos, good lighting, good editing. Make sure you have good captions. Use those call to actions to say, click on the link in my bio, those sorts of things. Really, again, like, Go to jenstrends.com. I have literally over 100 blog posts just dedicated to the, the topic of Instagram, so I've answered all of these questions and more. <laughs> Feel free to email me or hit me up on a direct message on Instagram, and I will, I will just tell me you met me here on, on Mary's you know show, and we can, we can talk more detail. Perfect. But you really do need to focus on quality content because it is such a visually stimulating platform that if you have crappy content, people are not going to interact, and you really have to okay. think strategically about that. Okay. That's really, really good advice. So, um, everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. 
go ahead and ask questions. We'll go back in, you know, tonight, tomorrow, the next couple days and answer your questions and Jen will post the link to her book and go ahead and repost the link to your website, whatever. I know Instagram for business, but dummies. I'm like, yeah, I need a signed, <laughs> I need a signed copy, please. Um, <laughs> yay. <laughs> I love it. Cause now I'm like, okay, I need to be on Instagram. I, now I have a reason. See, I didn't understand, but now after just listening to you talk about it and people chiming in, you know, I really have a reason for me to wrap my head around being on Instagram because my next, you know, hundreds, thousands of customers are probably going to come from Instagram. I'm like, woohoo. So everyone is saying, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Mary. Um, it was a great show. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate everyone coming on and watching us. Um, if you like this video and it served you and you benefited, you know what? Why don't you just click that little share button and go ahead and share it to your networks because we want to pay it forward and we want to help everyone. So everyone that needs Instagram help or if you know someone needs some LinkedIn help, just go ahead and share this video, share my business page. All of Jen's information is on the event. So you can go ahead and share all of her information. My, my friend Jill Ann says thanks. So high five, Jill. And Jen, I just want to say thank you again for your time. I know you're super busy. Um, and Robin says thank you. Oh my gosh, there's so many people on thanking us. So this was such a fun show. Now, Jen, where's your where's your wine? I just I just down the line. Oh, okay. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> oh, and Brian just said that he shared it. This was so much fun. I loved having you on, and I know that we are probably due for another Savvy Business Happy Hour coming up. We and we have to do it. I know, um, I think Kendra had posted, so we'll have to find out when we can get people yes. together this month, hopefully. Or That's going to be so fabulous. Hopefully. It's my birthday this month. We'll see you in real life again. It's my birthday this month, so I'm kind of thinking it should yeah. be this month so we can celebrate me right? <laughs> oh and you guys. My family that's watching, they know I like to celebrate my birthday. Um, anyways, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Please share this show. At my next show, I'm going to have Sashi Whitman, who is an instructor, social media instructor, up at UCSD. She'll be coming on Wednesday, June 20th at 7 p.m. Go ahead and drop your questions in the um, event that is on my business page. Okay, everyone, have a great evening and stay fabulous. Ciao.